Welcome to Bike Social, welcome to homeschooling, and today we're going to talk about bike geometry. Now hold on, I know lots of you are going to get very confused, so we're going to bring it down to the homeschooling simple level. And again, I apologise to those people who've written books about geometry, because we could talk about motorcycle geometry for hours. But what I want to do is bring it down to a really, really simple level, so when you're in a conversation, or when somebody's talking about rake and trail and wheelbase, you understand the simple terminology and you know how that affects your bike. So first of all, my reasonable diagram. If you can imagine this is the motorcycle, this is the fork angle, this is the road, this is the front wheel. Pretty basic. Now the difference in rake is this is an imaginary vertical line. So the distance from the vertical line to the fork is rake. If we, obviously the forks would normally stop here at the wheel spindle, but if we continue the line of the fork to the ground, and we have our imaginary vertical line, this distance is trail. Rake, trail. Very simple, easy to understand. Let's use these forks here. So, we will push out the forks. This is what you would have on a cruiser, for example. We will draw our imaginary vertical line straight through. The distance between our imaginary vertical line and the fork is going to be rake. If the forks extend past the front wheel, hit the road or tarmac, the distance between that and the line going through is trail. Rake and trail. So how do these affect a bike? Well, if the forks are fully out, we'll have a large rake and a large trail. If we pull the forks in, so they're nearly vertical, like our line, then rake and trail is being reduced because the forks are nearly vertical. Got it? Pretty simple. I'm glad you're still with me. Let's look at Honda's CB500X as an example of rake and trail. Now there's different terminology used. So if we can imagine, don't forget our imaginary vertical line is somewhere here that goes down to the road and the forks extend past the front wheel spindle to the road. Now this is what we would call quite a relaxed steering because the forks are reasonably far out from the bike. It's kind of relaxed steering. If we was to get these forks and push them towards the exhaust, towards the bike, the steering head would be much steeper and that would be a tighter or steeper steering head angle. Now simplified, again I apologise to those people who work in chassis development, but if the forks are further out, like a cruiser, the steering is slower. If we pull the forks closer towards the bike and pull the forks in, that increases the quickness of the steering. So, let's get these forks and push them closer to the bike and we'll have a faster steering bike. It's perfect, why doesn't everybody do that? Because the more the front wheel goes closer to the chassis, to the bike, the more we reduce rake and trail, the more we quicken the steering, affects stability. So if you can imagine you're on your bike, the front wheel is no longer out there, it is down here. We've got really fast steering, but really bad instability. We can change the stability by adding steering dampers and other you know, electronic dampers, but essentially when the front wheel comes close to the bike, the bike steers faster, but it affects stability. When the front end leaves or travels further away or is braked out, there's all these different terminologies like on a cruiser, then the steering becomes uh, slower and the bike is more stable. The other thing we're going to quickly look at is wheelbase, which is described uh, many times. So if this is our front wheel and this is our back wheel, we have a spindle. Where the spindle touches the road or track is the measurement between these two points is wheelbase. It's that simple. 
If you can imagine a drag bike has a huge wheelbase, like its back wheel is over here somewhere. A long, long wheelbase will reduce wheelies because the bike can't pivot. It will also increase stability and make sure the bike goes straight onwards. If we reduce the wheelbase and pull the back wheel further in, the bike will wheelie more and it will become more unstable. Now this is a really broad look at chassis. There's many other elements we can look at, like fork offset, swinging arm position, the angle of swinging arm, etc. But we just wanted to bring this down to a very basic level. The closer you can get to this imaginary line, reduces your rake and trail. The closer the front wheel comes towards the exhaust, quickens the steering. If we push the front wheel away from the exhaust, like a cruiser, it slows the steering. And again, there's gonna be lots of people looking at this going, oh, but what about cornering and how does that affect lean angle and edge grip? And there is a huge amount we could go into. We could write a book about this and go on for hours. But I just wanted to get the basics of homeschooling.